I'm Peter Face. I am an associate professor in rehabilitation sciences and physiotherapy. I work in Hasselt University in Belgium, and I'm also currently chairing the Rehabilitation and MS Network in Europe. So my research is focusing on gait function and arm function. What we do is try to measure gait function because it uh, seems to be easy, but it's much more complex than that. It's not only walking speed that may be important, but also the confidence in walking, um, the possibility to run, the possibility to uh, sit and stand, uh, stand up from a chair. So there's many components in walking. We try to uh, look uh, which are the best measures to quantify the gait dysfunction in patients with MS. As um, every MS patient behaves differently, the, the gait dysfunction is differently, the quality of life is different, the fatigue levels may be very different, impacting on the, the potential improvements. Uh, we don't know if persons with relapsing emitting have a different uh, effect of exercise compared, for example, persons with progressive MS. Persons with progressive MS, perhaps they need more time to uh, reach the same benefits of relapsing remitting patients. Also for many um, trials, clinical trials with drugs are mainly focusing on EDSS, which is a very rough measure. So it's a valuable measure, but it's not very sensitive to walking abilities or to cognitive dysfunction or um, to fatigue. People are also measuring um, brain lesions and atrophy. And of course, that, that's key. Uh, the better the brain, the more you can do, but there's no one-to-one -one relationship between your brain function and what uh, you can do in daily life. So I think it's key to measure the emotional feelings of the patients, uh, the fatigue, the, the mobility, the cognitive dysfunction, and also perhaps the interaction between both. Uh, because we tend to measure physical function separately and cognitive function separately. Uh, but likely in real life you need both functions at the same time. In the coming five years we should also have a lot of exercise trials, rehabilitation trials, where we look to the impact of that on brain function. So there are people who are having mainly problems with coordinating their hand movements, coordinating their gait, they are inaccurate in, um, for example, grasping an object, they are move making movement which is too large, or they have some tremor there, or when they are walking they are very unstable, like it looks like they are drunk, like they have this coordination problems that, that it's really um, socially almost not acceptable. I'm involved in a study who is investigating the effects of eye movement training in patients with ataxia and tremor in the hands and during walking. And there has been evidence in the past that there is an interaction between the quality of your eye movements, the accuracy of your eye movements, and your hand movements. So if you have inaccurate eye movements, maybe making too large eye movements, maybe have some tremor of your eyes, it affects how you can um, take objects in your hand, it affects how you're walking. So the purpose of this project is to see if we can uh, have training programs to improve that coordination. So um, we want to investigate if training at home with apps, because we have a lot of apps also for eye movement training, if people do that four weeks at home, if that will improve the quality of their eye movements, the control on the eye movements, and on its turn, if that will affect as well the accuracy of your hand movements. So patients may be, uh, persons with uh, tremor and ataxia may be able to walk more accurate with more stability uh, than before. The first papers are now uh, appearing about the effects, for example, of 12 weeks training with a wee balance board and they see that there are changes in the brain and the structure of the brain, the thickness of certain connections. Um, and I think that's, that's fabulous as it would really demonstrate that rehabilitation and exercises or cognitive rehabilitation is not for fun or for keeping people busy. It can really have a structural impact as it has been performed um, intensively. At the same time, you have to be careful not to provide hope which is not justified. It may also be that we have a risk of overtraining as well in uh, persons with uh, uh, certain types of progressive MS. So that's the challenge now that we all collaborate together and try to find who is responding to which type of treatment. But there's clearly indications uh, in many studies that um, there, there can be improvements uh, of different types of treatments.